Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. In this video, I'd like to take a close up look at an RC mechanical sound generator. About a year ago, I did a video with this 1890 lumber hooker and I showed the simple sound and smoke arrangement and I got good results. It made the actual operation of the boat more fun, more realistic, and even though the smoke wasn't an exact copy of the real thing and the sound was just an approximation of an engine room, it still all put together really added to the experience. So here I have finished this uh, supply steamer build and I'm going to outfit it with a simple mechanical sound generator. So let's take a quick look at that video from a year ago and you'll see what I mean about the sound and smoke and then we'll take a close up look. So this is DIY smoke and sound. And oh is this thing actually running on gas? So now in order to improve this device, which I'm going to call a Haven knocker, I've made up a little jig here with a power supply. For power, I'm going to use a motor speed control. This is a, uh, an eBay item, $5 free shipping, and I've just made a little box for it for the battery, and that fits in the back like this. So now I have variable speed forward neutral, and reverse. This is the standard 12 volt DC motor that I use on all of my models. I fastened it to a board using a single motor mount. I have an eBay brass coupling. I've changed the set screws for three millimeter bolts that are easier to tighten down. And the space between the two brackets is about three inches. On the end of the shaft, I've pressed on a standard nylon prop. I've used these brass couplings and cut them with a hacksaw to make other fittings here, 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 and the bearing here for the shaft. Partway down the shaft, I have a washer, a section of brass coupling, and a spacer. These are CA glued together and measure about one half an inch total. In the brass coupling, I have a lock bolt on one side. On the other side, I have a steel knob that replaces a bolt head, and that's on a threaded shaft that is locked down onto the main propeller shaft. And of course, this turns with every revolution. The knocker is made of two arms. One arm is fixed to the shaft here, and the top arm is simply a hinge with a can bolted onto it. The lower arm here and the upper arm is made from aluminum one half inch plywood trim available from almost every hardware store. The bottom arm is held onto a wooden block with a screw here and it's just a semi loose fit. The drum is a simple can from the dollar store with two holes drilled in the bottom and a lid. Now at low speed, this arrangement works like this. But if I accelerate, watch what happens. So in order to prevent that, I have an arrangement using an elastic band. On the board, I have screw eyes and the eye has been wrenched open and I can adjust the elastic band along these eyes to get the right tension. So here the can is in the up position and there's almost zero tension on the actual arm. And that means that there's no tension on the shaft or the motor when it turns. So now I can go slow and fast. So now the next step is to take off the lid and add in small objects inside the can to create a secondary vibration. So let's try three steel balls. Replace the lid and let's listen to that.
that gives the vibration a deeper sound. Let's add in some more balls and see what happens. So I now have eight balls inside the can. There's a bit more secondary sound coming, but the vibration coming from the can is much greater. And now if I increase the RPMs, there will be enough vibration from those balls to actually push the lid off the can. In order to make sure this lid stays on the can, I'm going to get a thin elastic band. And I'm going to arrange it like this. Now, when this device is in the hull of the model and surrounded by superstructure, that changes the whole sound. So let's put a bucket over it and listen. Certainly sounds mechanical. So let's change the mix inside the can. This time we'll try two small washers, a three millimeter lock nut, and a little piece of steel. Let's try the lid. Sounds a bit like an old tractor. <laughs> now with this combination, there's a lot less vibration because there's a lot less weight inside the can. And yet the sound is still very intense. So let's try something else. Let's try three number six screws, one half inch long. That does sound a bit softer. Another way to tweak the system is to move the elastic band one eye over to make it tighter here. So here it is, the Haven Knocker. It only uses about five eighths of an inch of shaft space. Now this Haven Knocker is very easy to take apart. Just loosen the set screws here and the top arm just comes apart. The can is held on with three millimeter nuts and bolts and the head is on the inside. The arm is easily cut out of the U-channel using a hacksaw. I put this end of the U-channel in a vise and compressed it so that it would fit inside the bottom arm. I have a piece of aluminum angle here that's bolted into the bottom arm. And the idea is for the bottom of the can to clear any of the lock nuts that I have on my couplings. So now the only spinning part that hits the bottom of the can will be this knob, which could be the head of a bolt, the can striker bolt, and the lock bolts are easily loosened off and the shaft is backed out. And the bottom arm is unscrewed. The distance between the shaft hole here and the hinge hole is approximately two inches. So let's mount this Haven knocker into the supply steamer. And looking inside, I have the shaft backed out about one inch. I've epoxied a bank of eyes onto the hull. They've all been opened up for my elastic band adjustment. 
And here I've epoxied in a block of wood that holds the screw for the bottom arm. So I set the bottom arm in position and then get my knocker assembly and slide it on like this. The shaft has a small flat on it and I bring it through and attach it onto the universal joint. And now the bottom arm of the knocker will slide like this on the shaft until I put a screw down here in the bottom. So now I have that screw tightened down, but allowing me a little bit of movement. The coupling bolts are tight and I have the bolt tightened down here. And I'm gonna use a pair of pliers to tighten down the striker bolt. I want that good and tight. Next, I replace the hinge pin here, and now the knocker will move up and down. And now I've connected the elastic band through the screw eyes, the one on the lid, I've got a battery, the ESC is installed, and everything's ready to go. Now, of course, when this model is down at the lake, the water will be up to the water line, and that will muffle the sound and change it a little bit more. So there's plenty of room here for experimentation with this knocker. And I hope that this video shows enough detail so that some of the viewers might be inclined to try to make an improved version. And that's the whole point of it. Thanks for watching.